Yes. Um, would you talk about men and Louise or fairies and angels? Did, did the Hawaiians believe men and Louise were real? And Okay, Menahunis and fairies and angels. That's an interesting combination, right. Well, when I say it's an interesting combination, it's because of the great misunderstanding today about Menahunis. And the fact that uh, what happens sometimes in a language is that a single word is used to cover all kinds of things it was never intended to. So the first thing to know about Menahunis is we're talking about real human beings. And uh, originally, this was a name given to a separate race, or actually three races, uh, the Nawa, the Namu, and the Nawau, and uh, meaning the, the noisy ones, the silent ones, and the wild ones. Okay. And some of these of those three races were very small people, some were giant people. When we say giant, they must have been really giant because at the time of Kamehameha, eight foot warriors were not uncommon. Okay? So these guys must have been really big to be, have stories told about them. Um, so the outside people, let's call them the Polynesians, called these three races together Menahuni. And which has a, a word with a double meaning. It can mean people of secret power, hidden power, and it can also mean people of little power. And of course, after the civilization fell and, and the islands that they were still on were conquered, they were people of little power. And then over a long period of time, uh, several things happened. One is, before Captain Cook, uh, anybody with little powers began to be called a Menahuni. So an alternate term that the chiefs of Hawaii had for the commoners was Menahuni. It was taken after this ancient race, but they were commoners, they didn't have any power, and the term Menahuni got put on them. Same thing happened in Tahiti, where they first used the term Manahuna, meaning the same thing, uh, for commoners. Okay? but originally referred back to this more ancient race. So then we had the Menahuni, and then most of the Menahuni left, and only a few stayed, and well into the uh, time of, uh, even I, well, into the time of the monarchy and into the time of the territory, uh, there were still people here on, especially on this island, but who thought of themselves racially as Menahuni. And they even put their names down on, on the census as Menahuni. Okay? So we're talking about a real people in that sense. Now, however, story, they were stories of little people. Whenever you talk about little people and you have Europeans or Americans, you're talking about leprechauns, fairies, brownies, that whole European thing. And what's really interesting is if you follow the European line all the way back, you encounter a real people who were finally called elves and brownies and, and fairies and so forth. Uh, and then they became mystical, mysterious, magical creatures. Well, a similar thing happened to the Menahuni here. Because there were so few and because the language was used much more restrictedly, it was being more restricted in its use here, sometimes even by law, uh, fewer words had to take on greater meanings. So Menahuni have been a lot of people now today that come from elsewhere other than the islands. Think of Menahuni, they're looking for fairies, nature spirits. <coughs> well, the Hawaiians believed in fairies and they believed in nature spirits. But they had different names. What were they called? They were called Eepa. And they were never as helpful as the ones in Europe. <laughs> but uh, they they were nature spirits, they were the equivalent of fairies, they, they were sometimes mischievous, most of the time ignored people, uh, but they were out there. Okay? And so they did have that term, and then anything like that began to be called Menahuni. Now angels you mentioned, angels is a different thing. Uh, the 
common term today is just a transliteration of English. It's anela. And that just means angel in a Hawaiian pronunciation. But they had their own form of angel. Um, actually, messenger, messengers or helpers of the god Kane, who was considered the creator god, um, not who created the universe, but a creator type. And um, a god of the high places and the mountains and the, and the source of water and that kind of thing. He had messengers in the form of birds called Awaiku. And they're the closest equivalent to the European Middle Eastern concept of angels. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes? Well, I mentioned the census taking. Uh, here on this island, uh, what's known from records is in the, in the valley of Wainiha. At the time, I believe it was the 1864 census, which was still under the monarchy and might have been the first census taken. Um, there were 64 uh, people in heads of families in Wainiha Valley who listed themselves as, when it said race, they put Menehuni. There are families who still trace their, their uh, origins or at least family connections to Menehuni, right. Some people don't like to say it, uh, and, but uh, there still are some, yeah. Okay. Uncle George Naope is considered a Menehuni, okay, right. Yeah, because you've got to remember, the Menehuni were, most people think of them as fairies and elves, so that when you say, well, I'm from Menehuni, people are going to look at you funny. It's like saying, yeah, my grandfather was a leprechaun, okay? <laughs> so there is that. There's also some of the embarrassment comes from the uh, religious atmosphere. Uh, if the person is part of a fundamentalist religious group, then you don't claim those kinds of Hawaiian mythological connections. Uh, so there's a lot of different reasons why. They were conquered people, so that's not all people who want to be more connected to an ali'i or chiefly line, don't want to bring up Menahuni stuff. Uh, lots of reasons. Yeah. Yes? Have you ever met anyone who's actually seen Menahuni? Seen what? Have you ever met anyone who has seen a Menahuni? Who has seen a Menahuni? I've seen many Menahunis myself. So are you talking about nature spirits now, or are you no, talking no, about real Menahunis? Oh, some of my best friends are Menahunis. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. I think people would have noticed. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, right. Because we're talking about real people. Like I said, under Kamehameha, they were eight foot and sometimes taller, some of the warriors. Uh, so um, well, we don't see. Do well, a lot of them got killed off. The sure. Yeah. yeah. In fact, there's one legend about a giant up in uh, Koke who was killed by uh, because he was he was one of the Nawao. He was a wild man. He was he was uh, uh, how can I say? They used to have a lot of movement between. Waimea, the town of Waimea in the south, over the mountains down into Kalalau. Uh, used to be regular kind of trade and traveling back and forth. And uh, this story was about a giant who was in the forest up there and he would waylay people and kill them and steal what they had. And uh, so he was a story of, that he was killed by a, uh, the equivalent of a sheriff. Yeah. So. There are many different stories and legends. Yeah. Yeah. 